Hello there and welcome to Bad Juju. My name is Mama Jules and every Monday I post a new truth crime video. If that sounds like the kind of thing you would like to see more of then why not press the subscribe button which is below me here somewhere on this screen. And if you also press the bell icon you will get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Okay then. Let's get on with our case today, which takes us to a town called Bonaparte in Iowa, USA, where two generations were wiped out by a member of their own family, a person they thought they could trust. So, if you're ready, grab a tea or a coffee and get comfortable, and together we will investigate the horrific story of the Bentzler family massacre. John Bentler was born on February the 25th, 1984, to Michael and Sandra Bentler. He was the eldest of four children, having three younger sisters. His sister Sheena was born in 1988, followed by Shelby in 1990, and then Shaney in 1992. Sean and his siblings grew up in the city of Bonaparte, Iowa, and attended Harmony High School. All four children were described as being good athletes and they were all members of the track team. John's father Michael had built the family home in Bonaparte himself. Michael and Sandra owned Mount Hamill Lumberyard and also went on to own Mount Pleasant Lumberyard. The family were very successful financially. While studying at Harmony High School, Sean met his closest friend Keith Gratz. After graduating high school in 2002, during the summer break, Sean and Keith moved into an apartment together in Quincy, Illinois, so that they could attend the nearby John Wood Community College. However, according to the official college records, Sean dropped out of college in the November before the end of the first semester, as he and his then-girlfriend, Nicole Picard, were expecting their first child. In 2002, Sean and Nicole's daughter, Chloe, was born. Sean found it difficult to provide financially for his daughter as he struggled to maintain a steady job and often worked a job for a few months before moving on to a different one. Sean got a job at the Home Depot in Quincy where he worked for a few months. However, he was always broke and was eventually asked to move out of the home he shared with Keith for not paying rent or contributing towards the bills. The next year, in 2003, Sean moved back to the family home in Bonaparte to work with his dad in the family lumber business. Whilst he was working there, he made very good money and seemed to have a natural flair for designing and building houses. However, Sean lacked the motivation and the hard work ethic needed to make a go of things and eventually he quit the job and ended up moving back to Quincy in 2005. He moved in with two friends, Anthony Logson and Travis Holder, into a house share. He got a job with Lowe's for a while and then ended up working as a car salesman. However, he wasn't doing well at all and he was always short of his rent and couldn't pay his bills. At around the same time, Sean began dating a girl called Lexi Leslie, and a couple of months later, Lexi became pregnant. Sean fathered a second daughter named Ava Lee Leslie, who was born in 2005. Sean had no job, he was behind on his bills and rent, and now had two children to support. Things were closing in on him, and he needed to find a way out fast. He decided to do the unthinkable and hatched a plan to murder his whole entire family, leaving him as the sole beneficiary to his family's fortune. In the middle of the night on the 16th of October, Sean took one of his roommate's vehicles belonging to Travis Holder and drove the one hour 20 minutes to his parents' home, arriving at about 3.30am. He let himself into the house and then took a shotgun from the basement. He knew where the guns were kept, as himself and his dad Mike used to go hunting together when Sean was younger. From here, he walked to his 17-year-old sister Sheena's bedroom where she was sleeping. She had a bedroom in the basement. 
He closed the door to the stairs to muffle the sound, counting on the rest of the family not to hear the shot. He then shot Sheena to death, and then he proceeded up the stairs to the first floor. He then went to his parents' bedroom, where he shot his mother Sandra in the jaw. The bullet went through her face and exited the other side of her jaw, but it didn't kill her. Mike woke up and he managed to get out of bed and he tried to wrestle the gun off of his son. Sean hit Mike in the head with the butt of the rifle before shooting him, once in the leg and once in the head, killing him. Sandra had managed, managed to get past Sean and ran to the girls' bedroom, screaming for them to dial 911. At 3.38am on the 16th of October, 14-year-old Shaney dialed 911 and on the call you can hear Sandra pleading with Sean to put the gun down. Sean hears Shaney on the phone so he goes into her bedroom next. On the 911 call you can hear the closet door creaking open. Shaney shouts, Sean, no, and then two gunshots are fired. The phone then goes dead. He comes out of Shaney's bedroom and shoots Sandra dead and then goes into Shelby's room and he finds her also hiding in her closet and as he pulls the trigger she puts her hand up instinctively to try to protect herself from the bullet and the bullet goes straight up her arm and into her chest. Sean then shot her in the head. He knows 911 have been called, so he turns all the lights off and rushes out of the house and he drives Travis's car down a service road at the back of the house to try to escape the ongoing police vehicles, which he knew would be headed his way. He panics and throws the rifle into a ditch just off the service road. Police arrived at the scene at 3.55am and enter the house and what awaits them is truly horrific. They find Mike's lifeless body on the floor of the master bedroom and then they see a trail of blood leading out onto the landing. They shine their flashlights out onto the landing area and find Sandra slumped over a chair at the end of the landing. They then go into Shaney's bedroom and after searching they open the closet door and find her sitting up in her closet, dead from a gunshot wound to the head. They then go into Shelby's room who was also dead in her closet. After carrying out a full search of the home, they find Sheena in her bed, who is also dead from being shot in the head. Sean had returned home to Quincy and at 10.15am of that same day, he was arrested on totally unrelated charges for unlawful possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. He had been due to appear in court on September the 19th, but he didn't show up, so a warrant was issued for his arrest. He was only being held on minor charges, and he needed $1,000 to post bail. He rang his best friend Keith and asked him to bail him out, and according to the phone call, Keith said Sean was freaking out and wanted to get out of jail fast. This was because he knew it was only a matter of time before he was apprehended for the murders he had just committed hours earlier. It was found that Travis's vehicle had been used to travel to the Bentler family home. Travis said he had last seen Sean sitting on the sofa at 1.30am and then he went to bed and he said when he woke up again at 6.45am he saw Sean in the apartment but when he was getting into his vehicle to go to work, he noticed that the petrol gauge was on empty and the previous evening, when he had parked it up, there was more than a quarter of a tank of fuel. During the trial, which took place in May 2007, the defence argued that there wasn't enough time for Sean to leave the apartment after 1.30am, drive the 1 hour 20 minutes to his parents' home in Bonaparte, Iowa, murder his entire family and then return home to Quincy, Illinois before 6.45 the following morning. But it was found that this was not the case and that in fact it was totally possible. Sean Bentler, 23, was charged with five counts of first degree murder for the deaths of his parents, Michael and Sandra, and his three sisters, Sheena who was 17, 
Shelby who was 15 and Shaney who was 14. He held a tissue to his eyes as he looked away from the photo shown in the court of the bodies of his parents and siblings. The photo showed Sheena Bentler dressed in her pyjamas lying in her bed with a gunshot wound to the face and the bodies of his other two sisters were found inside their closet with gunshot wounds to their heads. Michael's body was shown sprawled across a doorway between the master bedroom and the landing and another photo showed Sandra sat draped across a chair at the end of the landing. The incentive for the murders was purely financial. Sean had believed that he had pulled off the perfect murders and that he was going to inherit the family's substantial fortune. The mother of Sean's youngest daughter, Lexi Leslie, testified in court that she had spoken to Sean about his lack of a job and that she had told him that he had to start helping to pay for the care of their 19-month-old daughter, Ava Lee. He responded that when his parents were dead, he wouldn't have to worry about money anymore, and it was after this conversation had taken place that Sean had killed his family. On May the 24th, 2007, Sean Bentler was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole. He will obviously not be entitled to any inheritance, which was estimated in 2007 to be worth around $2.8 million. His inheritance will go to his two daughters, which will be held in a trust fund due to their age. They can access the fund when they reach 18 years old. What an absolute selfish, entitled idiot he was, wiping out his entire family just to gain some money. His daughters will never know their grandparents or their aunties and he's thrown his life away just to spend it rotting in a jail cell. Rest in peace, Bentler family. Well, again, we are at the end of our true, true crime investigation for today. But I hope to see you all again very soon for our next one. In the meantime, stay safe, look after one another. Love to you all.